Hello, welcome to another session of digital uh, forensics and investigation. In the previous session, <clears throat> we discussed the basics of the digital data uh, with the byte ordering mechanisms, for example, uh, Little Indian and Big Indian uh, method, uh, methods. Then we also discussed the uh, internal hardware internal structures, the master boot record, and also the partition table of the master boot. In the end, we discussed the GUID partition table, which is also known as GPT scheme. In this session, we will discuss the pros and cons of uh, open source tools available out there in the market. And we will see that how we can use Linux as a platform for the digital forensics. We will also discuss that how we can acquire images of a storage device and then analyze them using some open source uh, Linux tools. For example, DD, loopback interface and TSK Mac commands. So the term open source refers to something that the people can access, modify and share because its design is publicly accessible. And the open source tool, uh, term is actually originated in the context of software development to label a specific approach of creating computer programs. So open source software is considered as a software with a source code that anyone can access, inspect, modify, and even enhance it. So the source code is actually a basic part of a software that most computer users don't, don't see it, but the programmers who have access to the computer program source code can improve that program by adding some features to it or by fixing some parts of it that uh, don't work properly. Also, similarly, the open source tools are the software tools that are freely available without commercial license. So many different kinds of open source tools allow developers and other people to do certain things in the programming, maintaining the technologies and other type of the technology tasks. However, just because you can uh, view the source code it doesn't mean that you have a license to do anything else with it. So the open source initiative actually has created a formal definition that lays out the requirement for a, license, uh, for a software a license, uh, which is truly to be open source. So in a nutshell, uh, for any uh, tools or a software to be considered as an open source, a piece of software must be freely distributed, provides access to the source code, also allow the end users to modify the source code and also uh, doesn't restrict the use of that software at any level. So the open source tools are uh, typically created uh, as a collaborative effort in which the programmers improve the code and share the changes with the community. And it is usually available at no cost under the license which is defined by the open source initiative. So the open source tools may be considered as a viable alternatives to the most popular closed source applications. And some uh, open source tools offer very great uh, features and performance that are best if compared with the commercial counterpart. And the biggest advantage of the open source tool is the low cost means no license fee. So these tools are available free of cost. And this is great for those individuals who are learning or uh, involve the digital forensic activities because they can extract and examine evidences without any cost. There is also a great benefit for those who are using commercial tools. So they can add uh, a set of open source tools to their toolkit without any cost and also use their commercial tools to validate uh, the results of their open source tools. Open source tools are also considered uh, portable and flexible. So here, uh, the portable, I would say the it means that uh, you can easily take your toolkit with you as you move from one system to another system or from one job to another job. So if you are using a licensed and expensive commercial tools, your toolkit may not come with you if you move from one uh, uh, system to another system or from one uh, company to another company. So any uh, product specific expertise that you have built could end up with nothing and that will be worthless. So if you are currently employed in the law enforcement and any law enforcement tool that you are currently using 
would not be available to you if you decide to go into a private sector organization. So if the portability means that you can choose uh, where you use the tool, flexibility also means that uh, you can uh, choose how to use your tool. Okay. So you can use open source tools on your local systems or you can install them on a remote server and use them using uh, some remote shells. So you can install them on a single system or you can install them on a thousand of systems. Okay, so you can do all this without asking the software provider for any sort of permission, without filling out any purchased order and without plugging a thousand hardware copy protection dongles into those thousand machines. So people can get benefit from the open source tool, but uh, there is also some challenges and the disadvantage of, this, of the open source tools. The main disadvantage of the open source tool is uh, related to the difficulty of use because some open source application may be very tricky to set up and use them. Others application may lack user-friendly interface or some features that staff may be familiar with. So this can affect the productivity and prevent staff uh, from adopting or using a program with ease. The compatibility is another issue. So many type of uh, proprietary hardware need specialized driver to run open source tools, which are often uh, only available from the equipment manufacturer. And this can potentially add cost uh, to your project. Even if an open source driver exists, it may not work with the, your software as well as with your uh, proprietary driver. Liability and warranty is another uh, issue that uh, exists in the open source tools. So with proprietary software, the developer usually provides warranty as a part of the standard license agreement. This is because they fully control and uh, copyright the product and it's also its underlying uh, code. So the open source tool license typically contain only limited warranty and no liability. So in a nutshell, you can say that the open source tool may not be user friendly, also have some lack of maintenance. For example, there is no frequent updates and currently hardware and the software up, uh, support issue exists in the open source tool and it may come with no uh, guaranteed support. Okay, so Linux has uh, several features that makes it ideal for a digital uh, forensics and investigation uh, to acquire evidence and then examine that evidence. Because Unix base uh, Unix can be instructed to access the storage drives in a read or a read only mode. So possibly any bootable CD-ROM or the floppy disk containing that Unix operating system can serve as an uh, evidence acquisition boot disk. So, but one boot disk uh, may not work with all the Unix operating systems because different types of the Unix systems typically have different kinds of the hardware that are not compatible with each other. So one uh, boot disk, uh, for example, is needed to boot a Solaris running on the SunSpark based hardware, while there will, there will be another one which is needed to boot an Intel based uh, system running Linux operating system. So one boot disk might not be uh, sufficient for all Intel based system running Linux, as it may not uh, have uh, all the necessary drivers to access all the devices, for example, Ethernet card. Also, the operating system on the boot disk may alter the journaling file system during the startup process. So evidence acquisition boot disk with the Linux for the Intel based systems can be used to boot and access Windows computer. Okay. So Unix systems can reliably mount most hardware in the, in the read only mode. There is still a possibility that it could make changes uh, on onto on their evidentiary devices. So some examiner may use hardware write blocker as a as a precaution to extract uh, to acquire any image and for the analysis purpose. So Linux contain many useful utilities that are designed to work together. The output of one tool can be fed into 
uh, another tool as an input very easily. And this ability to pipe output from one program to another program creates a great flexibility. And this piping is usually represented with a, say, with a, with a vertical bar symbol. So for instance, uh, after sanitizing a disk with the command dd, as you can see the syntax of the command, the following command uh, can be used to fill uh, the whole device or all the sectors with zeros. So for example, if you for, use the command dd space uh, uh, if, which is, represents the input file of the hardware and uh, then the device and then hda represent the source code. And then you say that that command should be filled with all zeros. So just type that command and it will fill your hard drive with uh, all zeros. And this command looks for uh, anything that is non-zero and should return nothing provided the disk has been properly and perfectly sanitized. Also, Linux supports many file system types and can be used to examine media from Unix, Windows, Macintosh, and other type of the operating system. So Linux also permits direct access to devices and uh, it makes easier to acquire data from the damaged media and also bypass copyright protection on a certain memory cards. Since Linux is an open source, so it has a large technical support and allow digital evidence examiner to verify and augment their operations easily. So Linux has a number of simple utilities for imaging and basic uh, disk analysis. It includes first the dd command, which copies data from input file or the input device to an output file or to an output device. There is another command which is known as fdisk and sfdisk, which determines the disk structure. We also have a grep command, and the grep is an essential Linux command utility, you can say, and it is used to search text or string in a given file. We also have md five sum and uh, sha sha one sum, which creates and stores md5 and sha1 hashes of a file or the list of files. We also have another command files, so which reads files header information to determine its type, regardless of the name and its extension. We also have xxd command, which is a uh, command line hex dump tool. We also have g hex and uh, k hex edit uh, tools, uh, which are actually the hex editors. We also have another uh, command, which is a netcat. It is a command line tool to read and write over the network as well. The dd command stands for data dump, and it has input file and output file. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it is used to convert and copy a, uh, a file uh, from, in, uh, from output to the input. So it reads the input file parameters, convert it to a specified format, and copies the data into the output file parameters. The syntax of the dd command is as you can see on your slide. So for example, the dd with if means input file, uh, which represents the hard drive in this case, because sda is the name of the hard drive. And of represents the output file which is uh, actually uh, in the home directory in the user's uh, uh, profile with the name of uh, sdadisk.image. So in this command, <clears throat> it will create an image file with uh, the extension .img file uh, of a device, uh, which is sda hard drive, and save it to the home directory of the, uh, of, of your user, of the user account. We can also use uh, some additional uh, parameters with that. For example, <coughs> uh, no trunk uh, tells uh, DD not to trunk the output if the error is encountered during the process. There is also an additional uh, parameter sync, which actually tells the DD command to place zero in any blocks in the output file when an error is occurred. There is also another option which is no error. It tells the dd command <clears throat> not to stop duplicating when uh, an error is encountered. 
And of course, the default block size, which we discussed in the previous session, is 512 bytes, which is represent one sector size. You can also uh, perform the acquisition in segmented in segments or uh, split an image using the DD count and disk option, uh, skip options. The count switch indicates that how many blocks are copied from input device to uh, an output device or from an input image to an output image. While the skip switch or the skip command indicates that the number of blocks that are script, uh, skipped from the input file before copying begins. So for example, if we have a command of like say dd if uh, device uh, input device of uh, uh, h hd and the output uh, file is the image.dd with the count 1000 and skip 2000 and bs is equal to 1024. So it tells that copy 1000 uh, blocks. But before copying 1000 blocks, first skip 2000 blocks. So after skipping 2000 blocks, start copying. And the size of the block is represented with the bs. So each block size is 1024 bytes, which means two sectors per block. So <clears throat> assuming uh, a device which is HDC is a hard drive where you want to store a new evidence. So then you will need to use a DD command uh, to sanitize that uh, device first. So you can say the DD input file with all zeros and store, store those all zeros on the hard drive which is uh, HDC by uh, mentioning it in the output file. And also you can say uh, say that uh, there, there shouldn't be any uh, no trunk, no error and sync in addition to that. So this command will uh, output on the zeros when it is a source. For example, the reason, if you read the zero file, so it will only output zeros when it is read. So you are reading zeros and writing them to the hard drive to cleanse it. You can also wipe a partition using the same methods, not only the whole drive, but also the partition. In, if you want to wipe only the partition instead of the whole drive, so in that case, you only need to replace the uh, hard drive symbol with the partition symbol. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> for that, there um, various operating system use various convention but here for example the linux operating system so linux operating system use the numbering system for the partition so for example if sda represent the whole drive sda1 will represent the first partition sda2 will represent the second partition sda3 will represent the third partition so if you want to uh, uh, wipe or clean third partition only so replace sda with sda3 so this command will only wipe partition 3 instead of wiping the whole hard drive, which is SDA. Okay. The most commonly used forensic container format is the expert uh, witness format, which is also known as EWF and sometimes uh, referred to as EO1 format uh, after its uh, default extension which is E01, E01. So this format is used by uh, guidance software in case forensic suite. So this format has changed somewhat from one release of the in case to the next, and it is not a st open standard, okay? So the libewf library supports all modern variants of the image file, which are generated by the in case in this format. So EWF format supports compression, split files and store case metadata so the expert witness <coughs> compression format is currently uh, an unofficial standard and this format produces both compressed and uncompressed image files these files uh, uh, write an extension starting with e01 okay and increment it for each additional segment image volume so the EO1 file keeps a uh, backup of the various type of the acquired digital evidences. That includes 
disk imaging and storing of uh, logical files etc so when an investigator or the digital forensic expert uses the uses in case to create a backup of the data available on that hard on on, on a hard disk or any storage device a physical bitstream of the data is produced and this procedure is usually known as disk imaging so there is a header file so the header portion of the eo1 in case image file basically contains the case information so at the time of the disk imaging the user is required to enter these details into in case or into epoxy or into FD, uh, uh, ftk uh, imager there is also another field which is known as crc cyclic redundancy check so crc is an as i said the acronym for the cyclic redundancy check so crc is an error uh, detection code used by the in case in EO1 file to check for any accidental changes in the original data. So CRC is basically a hash function. A CRC code for each data block is created by, by the software at the beginning of the acquisition and it is stored. Later, when a particular data block is scanned, the CRC code of the resultant EO1 in case image is calculated again. And if the new calculated CRC code and the previously stored CRC code matches, then the data block is error free. Otherwise, it is considered that some error has occurred. There is also a data block and EO1 file extension contains data chunks. In these data chunks, the data is divided into the blocks of 32 kilobyte. Okay? And the CRC checksums are embedded between every data block and as i mentioned these are used to check for any uh, data error and uh, purposes there is also a footer and the footer portion of the eo1 image file format contains the md5 value of the entire message stream available in that particular file so this md5 hash value of the raw uh, raw data image can be checked and can be compared okay so if both uh, with the newly generated of course uh, md5 hashes so if both md5 hashes matches so then no more we can say that no modification has been made to the original disk image file if there is any uh, mismatch so then we can say that there has been some modification occurred or there is uh, or the, the disk image has been tampered the lib uh, ewf package x contains uh, various protocols and tools for example ewf acquire is one tool which writes storage media data from evidence and files to ewf files we also have the ewf acquire streams which writes data from uh, standard as uh, std standard devices into the ewf files we also have the uh, EWF export, which exports storage media data in EWF files to, to, uh, to split the raw format or uh, to a specific version of the EWF files. We also have EWF info tool, which shows the metadata in the EWF files. We also have another tool, which is EWF verify, which verifies the storage media data in EWF files. The open source community actually has produced some tools that com compete very well with the commercial uh, altern uh, alternatives or commercially available tools. So the most notable tool is the NASA Enhancement Loopback Kernel. So it enables us to take the forensic duplication and make it act as a real hard drive devices under the Linux operating system. So it is basically a modified version of the Linux kernel which is developed by the NASA. And some Linux operating system include this functionality into their kernel by, by default. The kernel is altered so that you can um, associate a file, which is actually the forensic duplication, with a local loopback device such as uh, device slash loop zero. Okay, so loop zero can be considered as a loopback device. When the forensic duplication is associated with a device, you can run tool on it such as the fdisk just uh, 
as if the original suspect price actually were attached to your uh, forensic workstation okay so you can consider that this is like a uh, original suspected drives so after installing the enhanced loopback device associate your raw uh, image with that uh, loopback device which is uh, loop zero after forensic duplication is associated with the loopback device we can now treat loopback device as a normal hard drive The process or the, uh, the file system artifact which uh, we will use is the sleuth kit. So the sleuth kit is the suite of the file system forensics tools which are originally, originally created by uh, Brian as an updated version of the older uh, Corona toolkits. So the, uh, the Corona toolkit which is known as TC uh, TCT was designed specifically to perform the forensic analysis of compromised Unix-like systems. So while being a very powerful set of early forensics tool, the Corona toolkit had a major shortcomings, including the lack of portability between the system and also the lack of support for the non-Unix-like file systems. So Carrier developed the sleuth kit to provide a highly portable, extensible and also a useful open source forensics toolkit. The TSK supports DOS partitions, also BSD partition, which is disclaimers, Mac partition, Sun slices, and GPT disks. It analyzes raw data, which is re usually represented in the uh, DD format, also in the expert witness format, which is EO1 format for the in case, and also EFF file systems and uh, disk images. It also supports the NTFS file system, FAT file system, uh, uh, EXT, e, uh, EXT1, EXT2, EXT3 file system, and also the IOA, ISO uh, 9660 file systems. And the core functionality allows you to analyze the volume and the file system metadata. Also, it has a the, the plugin architecture of the Salute Kits allows for adding the module to analyze file cont uh, contents and also build automated systems on it. It is used behind the scene in the autopsy and also uh, many other open sources and commercially forensics tools are in it. Okay, so the file system layer are the, uh, the, the processes uh, per, uh, usually contains the file system data such as uh, the layout, uh, allocation structures, and the boot blocks. There is a command like fs stat which shows the file system details and statistics including the layout size and the label. We also have another tool which is the file name layer tool. And this uh, this process it processes actually the file name structure which are typically located in the parent directory so we have two tools for example f find which finds the allocated and unallocated file names that points to a given metadata structure we also have the fls which lists the allocated and deleted file names in the directory metadata layer uh, a protocol uh, process the metadata structure which stores the detail about a file for example uh, for example uh, the fat system are M uh, mft systems in the ntfs so they, we have different tools in that for the metadata layer for tools which is icat so icat extracts the data unit of a file which are specified by its metadata address we also have ifind uh, it finds the metadata structure that has a given file name pointing to it or the metadata structure that points to a given data unit. We also have uh, ILS which lists the metadata structure and their contents in a pipe uh, format. Data unit layer uh, tools processes the data units where file content is stored. Examples of this layer include the cluster in FATS and uh, NTFS operator or file systems and the blocks and fragment uh, in the uh, EXTX or the UFS file systems. So we have the tool like DCAT, 
which extracts the content of a given data unit, DLS, which lists the details about the data units and can extract the unallocated spaces of a file system. We also have other tools like DSTAT and DCALC. For example, DCALC calculates where data is in the unallocated space images exist in the original, uh, original disk image. File system journaling tool processes the journals that comes uh, that, that some file systems actually have and contain. So the journal records of the metadata updates that, that are made, and this could help to recover uh, the recently deleted data. Examples of the file system without journaling journals include the, for example, the ext extension, ext3 extension uh, file systems, and also the ntfs file system. So for that, we have again like uh, gcat, which displays the content of the specific uh, 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 journal block, and we also have the jlist, which actually lists the entries of the uh, file system journal. Me uh, media management tool takes a disk image as an input and analyze its partition structure. Examples include like DOS partition, BST disk image table, and sun volume table of the content. So these can be used to uh, find uh, hidden data between the partition and to identify the file system offsets for the sleuth kit, DSK. So we have a tool like MMLS, so this, this uh, tool displays the layout of the disk, including the unallocated spaces. The image file tools contains tools for the image file format. So for example, uh, img underscore stat shows the detail of the image format. img underscore cat shows the raw content of the image file. We also have the disk tools that can be used to detect uh, and remove a host protected area, which is HPA in, in the hard drive. So the HPA could be used to hide data so that it could not be copied during the acquisition process. We call the acquisition process usually copied whatever is visible to the operating system. So we have the command like disk uh, underscore uh, S reset. These tools will automatically remove the HPA if, one ex if there is any uh, uh, HPA. So after the disk is reset, the HPA will return. We have the disk underscore stat. This tool will show if there is any HPA uh, in the disk. We also have other tools, for example, hfind, uh, magtime, uh, like sigfind, which is searches for the binary values at a given offset. And it is useful sometimes for the recovery of the lost data structures. So listing and recovering of the deleted file is also possible in this sleuth kit. So the TSK commands which are used to uh, recover those deleted files, first list, listing and then recovering the files include the FLS command and then the HiCat command. So FLS command is used to list, uh, used for file listing. It will show all the files available on the system. So here in this command, you can see that minus S which uh, tells the FLS which type of the file system we are analyzing. So here in this case, for example, in this command, NTFS is mentioned. So the NTFS type of the file system is being analyzed in this command. ICAT in the uh, TSK or the sleuth kit can be used to recover the deleted file. So in this case, uh, you can see the command like ICAT underscore F Linux extension of the device loop 753. So 53 is the index of the file system. So this is the graphical representation when you will run uh, the FLS command, which lists the, the deleted files uh, in, that, uh, 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 in that device. And so you will find that we have a deleted file, which is uh, located at the position of uh, uh, 560352. So here we have, uh, for example, this uh, file and uh, we need to recover that uh, file from, from, from uh, which was previously deleted. So to recover the file, as I mentioned, we need to use the ICAT command. So ICAT command is used to recover the deleted file. So you need to uh, use the ICAT commands thing with the, uh, with the uh, file uh, um, uh, index or the number, so, so which was actually 
560352. So you will mention the 560352 file uh, should be recovered. So the ICAT will try to recover this 560352 file from, uh, from the deleted files. So that, that brings us to the end of this session. So thank you very much for your attention.